Let's expand the conversation now with Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan. Josh, thanks so much for sharing part of your afternoon with us. So the U.S. is saying that King was released without any concessions. Does that ring true to you? Well, to be sure, Boris, that's very unusual, especially in the North Korean context. Uh, Charles Robert Jenkins, an Army soldier who defected in 1965, was held for 39 years and used for propaganda, forced to marry a Japanese wife, have some kids, before they eventually let him out. Otto Warmbier, an uh, American college student, was uh, taken hostage in 2018, returned 18 months later on a stretcher in a coma, and he died uh, six days later. So uh, Private King is a very lucky man who did a very foolish thing by running across that border. And uh, it's true, as Alex said, that it took extensive uh, um, machinations by the U.S. government, the Swedish government, and the Chinese government, not to mention the North Korean government, to orchestrate this release over the last couple of weeks. And according to administration officials, he's in good health and good spirits. They say he's very happy to be on his way home. Uh, what happens next? Well, after they, if things settle down, he could face a court martial because that's usually how the army handles deserters. Yeah, you mentioned the machinations by China and South Korea, Sweden included in there as well. What kind of deal making goes on in a situation like this? Because I, I'm still in a bit of disbelief that they would let him go, given their history, in exchange for seemingly nothing. Right. Well, most of the negotiations were logistics. According to administration officials, Swedish officials had to fly into North Korea, and then they had to accompany him all the way to the North Korea-China border. The U.S. Embassy had to coordinate with the Chinese government to pick him up on the Chinese side of that border and then get him out of China. And so all of that is a huge logistical operation. As for what the North, why did the North Koreans let him go, I think that's the $65,000, $64,000 question, uh, something that Private King may have some insight in, into once he gets stateside. But suffice to say, they didn't see uh, the value of holding him greater than mm. the uh, value of releasing him. And it shows that they don't want to deal with the United States. The Kim regime is pointing towards China. They're dealing with Putin. They don't want to talk to us, even to get something out of uh, releasing an American hostage. That's not a good sign at all. Yeah. So ultimately, what does it mean for U.S.-North Korea relations if they don't want to even have a conversation? Not much you can do except leave the door open for them and wait and hope they come back to the table. I mean, I've argued in The Washington Post that we should put some more humanitarian and economic support on the table for the North Koreans, try to, you know, get in between them and the Russians and the Chinese. But the Biden administration doesn't seem interested in that. Uh, we can see this as a, a, a sort of moment of cooperation, but it doesn't portend or, 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 or uh, indicate that there's going to be any real progress. I think all the signs, other signs coming out of North Korea state that they're going to get worse. They're going to build more missiles and more nuclear weapons and become closer to our adversaries. And uh, I think that's the bigger problem that the U.S. government will have to deal with one way or the other uh, after they get a private king home. Josh Rogan, always great to get your perspective, my friend. Anytime.